hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, short talk on devolution of OpenStack integration in OpenStack. My name is Numan Siddiq. I work in Red Hat. And uh, I'll yeah. be presenting this with uh, Daniel. OK. So this is the agenda for our talk. So we'll be talking about a little bit of history of how OpenVSwitch is used in OpenStack. Uh, we'll also talk about OVN, what is it, uh, its architecture, and uh, we'll compare both two. So this is the history of uh, uh, OpenVSwitch in OpenStack. Uh, if you see, like right from the earlier releases, OpenVSwitch has been mainly used on the layer two switching. So we had Neutron L2 agent, which was using Open Vis which is using OpenVSwitch mainly for the switching part. So as we see the journey towards it, um, uh, with the firewall driver, OpenVSwitch was uh, is used in you know the firewall features, which uses the connection tracking feature of OpenVSwitch, and um, with the Open uh, OVN project, um, uh, uh, OpenVSwitch is used you know with a lot of features. So basically, OVN uses uh, OVS for all its uh, virtual networking, like uh, it uses the flows. Um, uh, and it uses basically you know, the open message features. So uh, before that, let's see a little bit of architecture of OVN. Um, this is the architecture of like OVN. So uh, we have a Neutron uh, OVN plugin at the top, which Neutron would talk to, like if you want to create a virtual network or a Neutron or a port. Um, so we have a networking OVN uh, plugin, which talks. Uh, OVN has like two databases which is called OVN Northbound Database and OVN Southbound Database. So Northbound Database represents the, your uh, virtual, um, um, you know, it, uh, it represents your networking. Like you, uh, whenever you create an OpenStack Neutron network, a logical switch gets created in the database. Uh, when you create a port, it, uh, a logical port gets created. So that is the job of networking OVN. Uh, it basically listens to the Neutron APIs and writes it to the OVN Northbound Database. So OVN has a service uh, called OVN NorthD, which is like a centralized service. Uh, it listens to that OVN Northbound database and it converts into logical flows. Uh, it, uh, in, and it writes into the Southbound database. So in each of your uh, compute nodes, a service is run called OVN controller, which actually uh, connects to the Southbound database. So all these databases, like they talk OVSDB server protocol. And whenever a VM comes uh, on a compute node, so it programs those logical flows into actual open physic, uh, you know, open flow flows, and it hooks up the networking. So it's all like distributed. So um, Daniel will take from here. Thank you. Yeah, I'm. I'm going to talk a little bit about the comparison between ML2 OVN and ML2 OVS, like the major differences. I'm. I'm going to go quickly through it. Basically, the major difference would be like the components of each solution. ML2 OVS has a lot of uh, has a bunch of Neutron uh, Python agents, and uh, while ML2 OVN basically just runs OVN controller in all the nodes, so basically, you know, the complexity of the deployment gets reduced, and the, also the footprint. So it's better for a, a resource consumption utilization. It's it's a, a better approach. Um, also, most of it is open flow based, so we don't need most of the helper processes using uh, used in ML2 OVS reference implementation, such as uh, Keep Alive D or DNS Mask, uh, HA Proxy. So we are getting rid of those. Uh, basically, most of the stuff is implemented in open flow nat natively uh, via OVN controller. So that is also a huge advantage. Basically, everything is containerized in OpenFlow natively. Like, for example, the L3HA, we don't need any more uh, the KeepAliveD or VRRP or HA network devices. So we are reducing as well the number of network devices. Basically, that increases the uh, data plane performance because we are essentially having less, less hops in the network. So, and also, the failover just takes a couple of seconds to happen, and that happened under the hood. Uh, in the core OVN side. So Neutron doesn't have to take, you know, to worry about that anymore. With the routing, it happens pretty much the same. Basically, east-west routing happens distributedly in the compute nodes uh, via OpenFlow, while the SNAT traffic still goes through the network nodes. 
And we are using that, as Newman said, we are using OBS connection tracking for better performance. And floating IP, by default, they're getting distributed. Uh, the same goes for DHCP or IPv6. Uh, everything, have, we don't need RI DVD with the new Terminal 3 agent. We are not using those anymore. Everything, again, happens natively um, on open flow, just by deploying OVN controller in every node. And that happens distributedly and locally on the compute node. So basically, we're saving a lot of uh, network traffic. The same goes for internal DNS or, or load balancing. Actually, we're implementing uh, an experimental driver in Octavia right now for distributed L4 load balancer, uh, which is right now, you know, it got merged quite soon, so I mean quite early. And basically, uh, it's already available for experimental purposes. And just, uh, we had like our performance team pulling some figures to, you know, we are trying to, to get this uh, ML2 OVN as a default uh, network backend for triple O deployments. So we are trying to wrap our heads around the performance figures. We have done control and data plane um, performance testing. Basically, ML2 OVN outperforms ML2 OVS in both control plane and data plane. You know, we don't have much time, but you can reach out later to either Newman or I and, you know, but basically, what we found out is that uh, it outperforms uh, in both control and data planes. And again, with CPU utilization, we found like in some of the deployments, RabbitMQ starts to be a bottleneck in terms of CPU and also memory consumption because we are not using RabbitMQ anymore because OVN controller, all the components use OVSDB under the hood. Basically, we are not using RabbitMQ. All the CPU utilization drops dramatically. So that is an also like a very good advantage that we've found so far. And uh, so next question would be, what's next? No one will take over here. Yeah, so basically, um, we are planning for a, we are working on, uh, for a migration tool. Basically, if you have an ML2 OBS deployment, we can actually migrate that you know, in-house via the Ansible scripts, which you can switch over from OBS to OVN, like without migrating your VMs. And we also have like uh, QoS and other features coming up. Uh, I mean, we are, in the Open vSwitch community, we are also talking about, uh, right now OVN is an Open vSwitch project. So we are also talking whether we can split that up and have separate OVS and OVN so that they can be compiled separately and distributed separately. So that work is also going on. And also uh, OVS DB server supports Raft protocol like HAHA. Right now we use um, OVS DB server, you know, for all our northbound database uh, using Active Passive, using Pacemaker. So uh, we would like to move to Raft implementation of OVS DB server so that we have Active Active HA for all databases. Um, also, there is a huge amount of work going on in the OVN community to have um, a redesign of OVN services, you know, both OVN North V and OVN controller using uh, Rust and Has Haskell uh, using differential data log. So if you are interested, you can look into the Open vSwitch community. So there's some very interesting work going on there. So that would help us like in improving the OVN North and OVN controller services. Right now, it takes a bit of CPU because it's like a single threaded, and it computes all the logical flows if any changes happen to the database. So um, we are looking forward, that, for, forward to that as well. Um, so that's it we had. I think we have just 30 seconds for any questions you may have. So you have to be quick. Otherwise, thank you so much for coming. And you can reach out to us at any time. Thank you. Thank you.